In today's review, we're looking at a piece of software called Vinyl Studio. Now, Vinyl Studio lets you rip your records in order to play them digitally. It lets you take anything that you can play on a turntable through an audio interface and play it as a MP3 or WAV or FLAC or whatever you want. So this is typically used by DJs, and we're looking at this from the point of view of DJs today, to rip old vinyl that they want to have a digital copy of to play on modern digital systems. It could just be that you can't get that track digitally because we'd say, go buy it, just go buy it. If it is available digitally, it'll sound better, it'll take less time. But look, you might not be able to get that track. Uh, or you might have lots of vinyl you want to rip and you might decide that actually it is worth your time to spend uh, doing it rather than going and buying that vinyl. Or you just might want to, right? Sometimes there's no reason other than that. So we're going to talk now about how to do it. So I've got a classic piece of house vinyl here. I've deliberately picked something that's a little bit um, old and a little bit scratched. And although I have uh, given it a clean using cleaning fluid and a, um, a brush, it is still a pretty battered piece of vinyl. I used to DJ with this 30 years ago. So therefore, this is a good piece of vinyl I can use to really illustrate to you the three things that I think are special about this program. Because ultimately, you could do what I'm about to show you using anything that can record. QuickTime, if you're using a Mac, just hit record, get that signal in there, chop the beginning and end off, stick it in your DJ software, it's gonna be fine. But a piece of software like Vinyl Studio gives you lots more. So if you are ripping multiple pieces of music, especially if you wanna rip the whole release and have the whole release, the whole album or EP rather than just one track, or if you have got a lot to do, or if you just like the idea of doing this while saving time, then using something that's made for it, like this piece of software here, Vinyl Studio is, could be the right way to go for you. The big things about this software that I think are worth pointing out before we take a close look at, at it are, one then, I've already mentioned it, it can handle whole releases. And it does that quite elegantly by looking them up on Discogs, which is a store, an online record marketplace, and more importantly, database of all kinds of releases. So you can look up uh, your track there, and your album or your EP there, and you can find all the metadata for it, the artwork, and even sometimes where the tracks split uh, in order to have it do it all for you. The second thing it's good at then is taking every track on a release. So this has got one track here and two tracks here. You can record them all in one audio file and using what I just talked about, have it output three individual files in this case, because there's two tracks here and one track here, uh, as individual MP3s, but linking them all together as one release, which is saving you time when you put it into your DJ software or iTunes or wherever it's going to live. And another thing it's got built into it is lots of things which we're gonna look at when we get to this page here, where you can clean up the audio. You can make it louder, you can get rid of pops and crackles and so on and make it sound nicer. So I'm not gonna show you everything in the software or else we would be here for a long time, but I will talk you through ripping a piece of vinyl on it. And along the way, we'll see uh, most of the main functions that are in Vinyl Studio. Shall we get going then? So here, is my piece of vinyl, Raul Oriana's Real Wild House. And I want to rip this into the software and I'm gonna start then by going to the software and going to check level here. So this is gonna let me check that the level coming into the software from the audio interface is loud enough, but not so loud that it distorts. So the audio interface is selected here. This is the Denon DJ DS1 DVS audio interface I'm using here. It's both a phono preamp and as an interface to get the signal into the computer. I've chosen the first two channels, which are the left hand deck that I've plugged it into here on this audio interface. And then I'm gonna put the needle down on the record and we'll have a look at those levels. So here they are coming in. You're hearing the laptop audio, by the way. I'm monitoring on the laptop, which is why it sounds scratchy. Here we go. So that is quite quiet. Now there's no way of turning this audio interface up. That's okay because the software will handle all that for us, automatically making it louder later on. The real problem would be if it was too loud and it was up here, because that means that you'd have distortion. But no, it's fine. Uh, this is gonna be okay to record then. So now I've checked the audio interface uh, is working and I've checked my record level. There's various things that you've got down here. You can change the sample rate and so on. I'm gonna leave it where it is for now for this demonstration and get out of there. Right, so now we're ready to hit record. Now on this record tab and you work across from left to right in this software, that's how it works. 
On this record tab, there are various other options. So for instance, you can, um, if you've been working already on an album or a release and you have to leave it, you can come back and carry on. Uh, and there's other options as well for recording. So I've got my monitor level here and I've got my wait for needle down. And this means it won't start recording until it hears the needle go down, which is quite clever. So now I'm gonna click record and we'll get on with the options that you've got in there. When you click record, this comes up. Now you can put the artist, performer, title, release year and all this stuff in now. The minimum you have to put in is artist and album title or release title. However, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna to go to look up album online and this is where it gets really clever. So let's look at the record cover itself. There's a number here, BCM322X. Let's enter that into the software, BCM322X and see what it comes up with. So immediately you can see it's identified Raul Oriana's Real Wild House. It's got the track listing right. It knows how long each track is. I can even click Fetch Album Art here and it pulls in this cover for me so that I don't have to worry about going and getting that later, which is such a big time saver. It gets better than that as we're going to find out though. However, having done all that, we can close this. We can click Use Selected Listing, get out of there and we're ready to go. I'll click record and then I will have a quick read of the instructions here. I'm leaving these up because you might want to pause and see the extra information it's telling me. You can turn all this stuff off when you get used to it. And then we're going to pop that needle down on the record and get started. Here we can see the level coming in and it's telling me here it's recording. And there we go, that's the end of side one. So just with everything still running over on the software, I'm gonna flip over to side two and give it a little clean and then we'll get on with doing this side. Again, I've not stopped anything on the software, I'm just letting this play on and we'll record the tracks on side two. Okay, so here we are at the end of the first track on side B and to make it crystal clear what I'm doing, I'm just letting the recording play on over here. There we go, and we're done. So let's turn the recording off. And this window is telling us that Vinyl Studio makes an actual project for each album or release we're working on. And that's an important thing to know because one of the great things about this whole process I'm showing you now is it's non-destructive. You can come back and you can try again if you think you've messed up some of the processing you do on your track or whatever. So I've just pressed the split tracks button there. Now because it knows the length of the tracks, you see we've got 615, 509, 318, it's put in these with the right length more or less, but of course it doesn't know how much silence there is between the tracks or how much space I left when I was turning it over, which is why you can see that this one here, these little flags, the green one is the beginning and the red one is the end. These little flags here, the first one's not too far off, it's kind of got the length right, the second one has gone back a few seconds and the third one's gone back a few seconds more. But that's fine, I can fix all this very quickly, which is what we'll do now. By clicking this little plus sign, it will zoom in to where the cursor is here. And so I can see here where the track begins and I can move this to the right place like that. And I can press play just to check that I am in the right place. Yep, that's just at the beginning of the percussion there. Now I can zoom out a little bit. I can move my cursor to somewhere near the end and then I can get that ending right as well. So zooming in one more time and I can have a listen. There we go, we're at the end there. So I'm gonna move the beginning of the next track up to there and I'm gonna move the end of this track up to here and you'll see that it's marking it, it's about there, wasn't it? You'll see that it's marking in the bits that aren't gonna be used. There we go, so track one's done. Track two. So there's a little bit of silence there at the beginning. That was just all the crackles. All this here is the crackles. So let's move up to here to try and find the actual beginning. That's close enough for me. And then I'm gonna move the end one again to the right place, just zooming around on the waveform. So again, I'll move this to somewhere near where I think the next track starts. Move this to where the track ends, somewhere near the fade there. Let's have a listen and make sure that we haven't cut any of the track off. 
There we go. Right, so I've now got the end of the track in there. Get the beginning in the right place. Perfect. And then finally, we'll go to the very last one back here. And double check that we haven't cut anything off at the end. Looks good to me. Yep, there's loads and loads of space at the end there. That's all space, so I can move this back to here. All right, so now I've got the tracks marked. I know that these markers are all in the right place. The next thing I want to do is start looking at the audio because it doesn't sound so good, does it? It's got an awful lot of pops and crackles and so on in it. So I'm going to click through to the clean up audio section. So there's a lot you can do here and I'm just going to show you the basics and I'm going to use the automatic cleaning here. So if it was a very valuable recording and you wanted to spend some time on it, you could do more than you're about to see me doing. But for the purpose of this review, I'm just going to do some basics. So down the bottom here, we have some different controls that can help us to do this stuff. So this one here will scan the whole recording looking for clicks. Let's do that. Now, you see here we've got some settings that will determine how sensitive it is and other things as well. So for instance, here is the right place to start. This is where you can choose something that suits what you've just ripped. So for instance, in this instance, uh, I will probably stay with default or I might choose pop music on vinyl. And then you can see it changes certain things in order to fit whatever it is you chose. So you can experiment with these, but for now, I'm just gonna click scan and it's gonna scan through the whole track and it's looking at all the clicks it finds and they're all listed down here. And they've now been automatically taken out of this recording. So you see all this white stuff here on the recording? This is telling me the clicks that have been removed. So although they've been automatically taken out, they're kind of still there, so we can always revert. So if it messes it up, if the recording doesn't sound right, this is completely non-destructive. We can come back to the project and start right from the very beginning, in the future if we want. And so this is the, one of the great things about this. It's non-destructive. Let's listen to the very end of this track here. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit on my screen and lean into the laptop. And even on this little microphone around my neck, you'll be able to hear the difference now that it's taken taking out some of those crackles at the end of the song. You hear how much quieter that was? It's not perfect. And then if it's not perfect, we can go in and use manual click repair. Now there is a lot more you can do in here. If I click into here, you can see we've got rumble filter, hum filter, hiss filter, graphic equalizer. So you can spend as long as you want getting this sounding absolutely perfect to your ears. But for now, we've got a cleaner, louder, it's automatically been normalized, which means made nice and loud recording. Now we have two options here. For DJs, burning CDs is unlikely to be the option we want. Although if you did burn a CD, the tracks would all be right and the titling would all be right. Instead, I'm gonna to go to batch here. And this is where we can save everything out. Now I could spend all day doing what I just did and I'd have a whole long list here and I could output them all in one go. Again, this is saving you time. For now though, I've just got one. I'm gonna tick it. I'm gonna click save tracks, decide what I wanna save them out. Let's save them out as just standard MP3s now. So we get our MP3 options. We're not gonna to wanna to save this at anything less than 320 at a constant bit rate. So let's select that and then click apply. Save. They've all been added to my music library on this Mac. Automatically, here's the album, here are the tracks. And because I chose to save them to my desktop for the sake of this review, it's given me a folder with the usual artist title and then the track numbers and names down here as well, ready to drag straight into my DJ software. Nice, loud, de-clicked, tidied up versions of the track I ripped from here. And as you saw there, really the amount of time it takes is the amount of time it takes to play the record plus just a couple of minutes longer. It wasn't my intention here to show you everything in that software. You would have seen other stuff that interested you as we were walking around then, I'm sure. My intention was to show you how easy it is to use. It's a complex piece of software. You can mess with the sample rates. There's advanced manual processing of your files as we looked at. There's all the file types. There's RIAA equalization. You can use it to rip 78s and readjust the, the length of those 78s even if your turntable can't play 78s and all kinds of other clever stuff. Basically everything you could possibly want when ripping vinyl has been thought about. But the 
same time, it's simple. There's an easy workflow, there's automations. The looking up in Discogs is absolute genius. And the thing I really liked about it, which I mentioned earlier, is it's non-destructive. If you didn't like the outcome, you were listening to it on a system and you thought that the removal of clicks was also removing some of the, the, um, the, the hi-hats and stuff, you can go in and kind of tone that down and get to the point where you've got a nice, a nice medium between the state of the record that you tried to rip and the quality of the finished recording. This kind of software is great if you do a lot of ripping. If not, then it's just as easy to set up something I've got here and then rip into, frankly, quick time on a Mac, as I say, or Audacity would be fine. But as soon as you're ripping multiple vinyl, as soon as you need that batch processing, and as soon as you want to find a way that makes your vinyl sounds good, sound good without spending a long, long time tidying up each individual rip, Vinyl Studio is a real godsend and a time saver. I've, I've used it for a while now and I wouldn't use anything else to rip vinyl personally. So that's our look from a DJ's point of view at Vinyl Studio. If you've enjoyed this review, please do subscribe to the channel, but more importantly, subscribe to Digital DJ Tips where we help DJs become better at what they do. There's a link underneath. For me, Phil in the studio for the time being. Get good, get out there and make the moments. Till next time.